Hey, what's up, everyone? So you asked for it, and you got it. Today we're learning English with Frozen Two. Now we'll be looking at two scenes from this incredible movie. First off, we will be learning with the theme song, and then after that, we will learn with a funny scene featuring Anna and Olaf. Let's get into it. For trouble, while others don't. There's a thousand reasons I should go about my day and ignore your whispers, which I wish would go away. Oh, oh, you're not a voice. You're just a ringing in my ear, and if I heard you, which I don't. Spoken for, I fear. Everyone I've ever loved is here within these walls. I'm sorry, secret siren, but I'm blocking out your calls. I've had my adventure and don't need something new. I am afraid of what I'm risking if I follow you into the unknown. Isn't that song great? Well, now we are going to learn all of the most difficult vocabulary and pronunciation from it. But quickly, before we do, I want to let you know that if you are new here, every single week we make lessons like this with your favorite songs, movies, series, and so much more, so that you can understand fast-speaking natives without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and without subtitles. Just like Akirandu, who says that they even cried the first time that they understood without the subtitles. Thanks to our videos, and you can too. It's really simple. Join over three million learners from around the world by hitting that subscribe button and the bell down below. I can hear you, but I won't. Some look for trouble. While others don't, there's a thousand reasons I should go about my day. The phrasal verb "go about" is used to say that you do something as you would normally do. This may take a while. Go about your business. Here, Elsa is saying that she has many reasons to continue with her day in a normal way without following the mysterious call of the voice. And ignore your whispers, which I wish would go away.、Oh. If you whisper a secret to someone, that means that you speak very quietly to that person, using your breath instead of your normal voice. You might whisper, for example, when you are telling someone a secret. Although this voice that calls Elsa doesn't really sound like a whisper, as it's quite loud, Elsa refers to it like this because she is the only one that is able to hear it. Do you hear that? What? Never mind. And ignore your whispers, which I wish would go away.、Oh. There is a very subtle aspect of native pronunciation here that is very common. This is an instance where we'd add an extra sound between two words. When a word ends in an o or u sound and the following word begins with a vowel sound, we often add a w sound, like the words you and always, when put together, becomes you always, or. Who is it? Which you might say when someone knocks on your door becomes who is it. So in this case, go away becomes go away, go away. Listen to that again and repeat after Elsa. Do you want to master native sound morphing like this? Then don't miss this lesson that we made on our second channel, Real Life English. You're not a voice. 
You're just a ringing in my ear And if I heard you, which I don't And spoken for, I fear a ringing in your ear is a high frequency sound that might appear after you're exposed to a loud noise, such as an explosion or the speakers at a concert. But where do I go from here? So many voices ringing in my ear. Obviously, if your ears are ringing, no one but you can hear that sound. So, Elsa is telling herself that this voice isn't real, it's just a ringing in her ear. She also says that even if she did hear it, she is spoken for. Do you know the meaning of this phrase? Scared, unavailable, interested. Exactly. In other words, she is saying, I'm sorry, I'm unavailable. She is spoken for by the people that she loves, as we'll hear in the next line. We might also use this expression to say that someone is in a relationship. They are not single. And if I heard you, which I don't, and spoken for, I fear. Finally, she says, I fear here. You have probably heard this word before, meaning that you are scared of something. Example, I have a fear of heights. However, we use this collocation, I fear, to mean that we are sorry about something. Example, I fear I will be a few minutes late. He hit it! He hit the dragon! No. He did! He hit his mark, I saw! These arrows cannot pierce its hide. I fear nothing will. Everyone I've ever loved is here within these walls. Within is another way of saying inside. Elsa's place is in the castle, as she is the queen of Arendelle, and she is not supposed to leave again. I'm sorry, secret siren, but I'm blocking out your calls. A siren is a mythological creature that used her singing to attract sailors into dangerous waters. It is similar to a mermaid. There is a very popular Disney mermaid that you probably know, Ariel. Elsa is referring to this voice as a siren because she thinks that her beautiful voice will only lead her to trouble. For this reason, she says that she will block out her calls. As used here, this phrase of verb is used to say that you stop light or sound from reaching something. Example, unstall better curtains to block out the morning sun. I'm sorry, secret siren, but I'm blocking out your calls. By the way, we had a fantastic instance of native connected speech here. When we have a T sound followed by a Y sound, it often morphs to a CH sound. This is the case with blocking out your calls, which becomes blocking out your calls. This also happens when we have a D plus Y sound, but they morph to a J sound. We saw this earlier when Elsa sang this. And if I heard you, which I don't. Let's see some more examples of this type of morphing. Can I hold your hand? Uh, no. Um, my parents are here. They are? You found your parents? Well, not exactly, no. Now, if it's important for you to understand natives, even when we speak really fast and morph our words like we've seen here, then I highly recommend you try our three-part masterclass. Now, in this masterclass, you will be learning English with the TV series Friends, which various academic studies show is one of the best series out there for learning English and you'll be learning the three principles to being able to understand natives at any speed. And that is vocabulary, pronunciation, and cultural context. So what are you waiting for? The best part of all this is that you can sign up right now for free. All you have to do is click up here or down in the description below to learn more. Now I look forward to seeing you inside. I've had my adventure and don't need something new. I am afraid of what I'm risking if I find a situation in which you are exposed to danger is risky. So risk is the act of exposing yourself to danger or to losing important things. The way Elsa used it here is a bit like how you risk money when you gamble at a casino. Let's look at another example of this use of this word. I'm going back out to look for Princess Anna. You cannot risk going out there again. Into the if you don't know a certain thing, you could say that that thing is unknown to you. However, the unknown refers to a place that has not been explored yet. Elsa will follow the voice and go there, without knowing what she will find there or the origin of that voice. 
you either, Anna. Come on. Mm. Wait, what? What are you doing? Oh. Elsa! This might sound crazy, but I'm sensing some rising anger. Uh, well, I am angry, Olaf. She promised me we'd do this together. Yeah, huh? But what I mean is I'm sensing rising anger in me. Wait, you're angry? Um, I, th I think so. Elsa pushed me away, too, and didn't even say goodbye. And you have every right to be very, very mad at her. And you said some things never changed, but since then, everything's done nothing but change. I know. But, but look, I'm still here holding your hand. Don't do this alone. Let me help you, please. I can't lose you, Elsa. In cases like this one, the word lose doesn't refer to the inability to find something or someone. It is actually a way of referring to someone's death. The sisters already lost their parents in a tragic accident, so Anna is saying that she couldn't stand losing her sister, too. Did you catch the humor here? There is a pun intended, as the phrase, give me a hand, is commonly used for asking someone for help. Hey, hey, whoa, who said you kids could torture the sloth? Hey, Manny, Diego, my bad mammal gammals. Want to give us a sloth a hand? Oh. Look, I opened my camp. However, here we see that Olaf literally gives his hand to Anna in order to help her. Hang on! Can you guess the meaning of the phrase of verb hang on? That's right, it can mean both wait and, as in this case, hold tightly. So many of my students tell me that they are really frustrated by learning phrasal verbs. There's just so many of them, and how do you remember all of them, right? Well, if you want to learn all about phrasal verbs and how you can never forget them, then I highly recommend that next you check out this lesson. You'll find that by clicking up here or down in the description below. In cases like this one, this phrasal verb is used to express anger or frustration. Here we can get a good example of native pronunciation with phrasal verbs. Let's check it out. Come on! Phrasal verbs consist of a verb and a particle. Now verbs are content words. This means we stress them. Particles are function words. They are de-stressed. Something that can make your speech sound unnatural as a non-native is overstressing function words, like the particles and phrasal verbs. Let's take this phrasal verb, come on, as an example. We stress come and de-stress on. Furthermore, we connect the two. So instead of saying come on, we say come on. Let's look at some more examples. The new scooch over has dropped. Oh, come on, nobody falls asleep that fast. The coaches are lined up as the cream of the crop pours out of them like Miss Muppet's curds and whey. Anna, this might sound crazy, but I'm sensing some rising anger. When something rises, it moves from a lower position to a higher one. For example, a balloon rises in the air. However, Olaf is saying in a figurative way that he senses his anger rising. So he means that he feels that he is becoming angry with Elsa for what she just did to them. Wait, you're angry? Um, I, th I think so. Elsa pushed me away too and 
didn't even say goodbye. The phrase, push someone away, is used to say that you don't need help or attention from that person. In this case, Elsa literally pushed them away. In the first Frozen movie, we've seen that Elsa constantly pushed her sister away because she was afraid of hurting her with her powers. And you have every right to be very, very mad at her. Mad is a word that Americans use often instead of angry. If someone tells you this phrase, they mean that you have a good reason to feel how you feel. Example, you have every right to be sad. If you want to mean the opposite, you can say the phrase, you have no right. You have no right. No right to enter that mountain. And you said some things never changed, but since then, everything's done nothing but change. This is another very common phrase that means only. So here, Olaf is saying that things have done nothing but change. So in other words, he is saying that things have only changed since she sang that song with him. Some things never change, like how I'm holding on tight to you. I know, but, but look, I'm still here holding your hand. Here, we have another humorous phrase, as this expression is commonly used to say that you give another person your support. However, here we see Anna literally holding Olaf's hand. I can hear you, but I won't. Some look for trouble while others don't. There's a thousand reasons I should go about my day And ignore your whispers which I wish would go away Oh, oh. You're not a voice You're just a ringing in my ear And if I heard you, which I don't And spoken for, I fear Everyone I've ever loved is here within these walls. I'm sorry, secret siren, but I'm blocking out your calls. I've had my adventure, I don't need something new. you either, Anna. Come on. Mm. Wait, what? What are you doing? Oh. Elsa! No, no! Oh. Olaf, help me stop! Give me a hand! I'm sensing rising anger in me. Wait, you're angry? Um, I, th I think so. Elsa pushed me away too and didn't even say goodbye. And you have every right to be very, very mad at her. And you said some things never changed, but since then, everything's done nothing but change. I know, but, but look, I'm still here holding your hand. <sighs> 
Well, it's nice to see that humans never change. Open your eyes, let's begin. Yes, it's really me, it's Maui. Breathe it in. I know it's a lot, the hair, the bod. When you're staring at a demigod, what can I say except you're welcome for the tides, the sun, the sky?